Hey everybody, welcome to AJS News. It is a very busy Monday. We've Whew. got three episodes today. <laughs> Damn. Uh, lots of news happened in the last week. Let's do it. Let's jump right in. But first, let's get a word from a very special returning sponsor. Anime. It is the best. Recently, I have been watching, actually it was a recommendation from Critical on Moist Meter, Jujutsu Kaisen is freaking awesome. It's on Crunchyroll. It's ad-free, 1080p quality, and you've got the newest episodes within one hour of it airing on Japan. I made the mistake of doing HBO Max, and then the episodes cut off at 13. I'm like, no, I need more. more. <laughs> <laughs> right? But it's on Crunchyroll. Get Crunchyroll now because it's freaking an amazing show. You been watching anything? Yes, I actually recommended it for me to watch Demon Slayer, and that did not disappoint as a great action and a nice horror element. I love it. I can't wait for more of that. I haven't even seen that one. You I have to watch, to watch that, one that one too. One. Alex? No, I, I, he was telling me about it. I'm going to have to watch it. Watch it. Guys, seriously, Crunchyroll, it's freaking awesome. You need to be watching anime. If you love good animations, if you love good stories, sign up they now. Have we have our that. own URL, crunchyroll.com slash Show. Now, Crunchyroll is the place it offers more than 90% of all the officially licensed anime content in the world. So support this if you love anime like I do and Joe does. And we'll get Alex into it as well. Gotcha. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching. Anime, there's just get it. Seriously, click those links well down below. Support the Angry Joe Show. Support your own brain by watching good anime. The Juju Jujutsu. At first, I thought it was like Jujutsu, you know, from yeah. with Nicolas Cage kind of stuff. But no, it's Jujutsu uh, Kaizen. It's really awesome. Those battles so far, and I will check out Demon Slayer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's get jump r jump right into the news. Click those links below and uh, watch some anime. All right, first news. So shocking. Oh. Shocking. Well, E3's you. canceled this year. Uh, it turns I out, don't believe you. Turns out, uh, several thousand gamers, all in a very small enclosed space, is uh, a bad idea. It's not going to be a good idea. idea. So, the, you know, we've known, we've known uh, officially now the in-person events for E3 officially canceled. The city of mm. LA is like, nope, can't do it. Yeah. And so uh, we'll have to see if they do any sort of online thing. Uh, mm -hmm. We've actually heard from a lot of other people in the industry that's like, if you don't do something, if June, you, if you don't do something, uh, you know, ESA, someone will, someone will replace you because. You're easily replaced. Uh, so true. we'll just have to see what happens if that's they decide true. to do some sort of digital event instead. I would like but to see a digital event. Yeah, that's what they're, we're They're very nice. Uh, you know, at least from the big three, they don't have to have an audience of people, you know, in, in there. They could just do the d Nintendo Direct. Yeah. I, I hope that they will State also. Play. Son yeah, of a better. EA. <laughs> Son <laughs> of a <laughs> EA. I actually got... Apparently, good EA news. We'll get to that in the in the future. But yeah, all right. Well, you know, n <sighs> I like exchanging business cards and stuff like that, and getting in front of people I and, like being and social. And you seeing seeing their face and and connecting that way ma ensures that you can you know stay in touch. But other than that, I just like it online. It's just easier. Yeah, it'll be easier yeah. this way. Yeah. All right. Uh, next there. next story. Uh, three four three. Uh, we actually got some graphic improvements from them. We've been talking about Halo for a while. We memed on them for a really long time. Yes, it's like, I this is the next gen Halo. This yeah. looks, looks nothing terrible. Now. And so we got some screenshots for the first time showing the improvements. Uh, they are working really hard to show everyone. It's like, look, we, 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 we want this game out too, but we want to make it so you don't make fun of us. And so <laughs> uh, it, it, it actually, some of the stuff looked pretty good. And so, yeah. you know, good on them for putting in the work and making yeah. sure that, that Halo meets the quality level that I would assume that they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for next-gen Halo, you yeah. know. And they I haven't uh, set any uh, dates or anything, like year, maybe next year? Or uh, this year? Yeah, it's going to be a fall 2021 release date. Mm. <coughs> yeah, I, I mean, graphics has never been too important to me personally. But you want to get your graphics in a spot where you're not being made fun of. Where you're and not meet. being embarrassed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you put out a next-gen console that's the first time in however many years, and you're talking about how many floppy boys this thing's got, 12 teraflops, it's like that thing looks like it runs on a potato. Yeah. Like what you is wrong with you? You can still play that on 360. Yeah, Come you can on. play that on your cell phone is what the, what the original <laughs> screenshots yeah. look like. And so I'm glad that they're putting, putting that effort through. So good on you. Now let's hope that the game is also good. Yeah. All right, a quick one that we want to do a quick rundown on. There's a game called The Sinking City. Yeah. Uh, oh, I saw that. Frogwares uh, is the, the developer, and then there's a different uh, publisher, 
and the developer says, do not buy the one that's on Steam. We <laughs> didn't make it. Now, there's a huge backstory. We're not going to get all into it, but know that there's some arguments Don't buy our game. The developer and, the, the, and, the, and the publisher, and they're fighting over stuff. They've sued each other. One, the oh, developer no. says, you owe, they owe me a million dollars, and so they're kind of fighting over this game, and they're saying, the game that releases on Steam is not something we developed. It's not something that comes to us, so don't buy it. And so the, this is an ongoing thing that I'm at that they're gonna, they're actively suing each other over. Yeah. So we'll just kind of have to see where it goes. We'll keep you guessing. Yeah, the, 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 the <laughs> latest version on Steam is missing some cloud saves, some achievements, mm-hmm. some functionality, and and the the developers not cooperating with the publisher. Publishers like I gave you money. Developers like you didn't give it. You owe me a million man, euros. Like this and that. So back and forth. Yeah, it's a developing story. We'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. So <laughs> there's an ongoing current legal and technical situation. The sinking so. city. I missed that one. Yeah. <coughs> well, it's coming out for PS5. You know, actually a new game, some PS5. Yeah. So we'll have to see if, if, if that happens. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, it's beefy news. CD Projekt, we've been talking about patches to fix that game, Cyberpunk, They've that we all want to play. Mm-hmm. Now, the patch itself has been delayed. Yes. Now, we talked a little bit about the ransomware attack that happened. And apparently that story is bigger than some people originally thought. The ransom attack is meaning that no one can work at CD Projekt Red. Very few people, oh all the no. remote people are having to like send their PCs <laughs> in, not access VPN, and they're having to scan everyone because no one's there. And so all of their IT staff are trying to go through all of the, the, the computers that people are logging in remotely on to make sure there's no malware in any of those things. And so we're talking extreme Damn. delays on some of these patches yeah. and further content. And it was already bad enough for them. It is. And it's a horse that is clearly dead. And we're just keep beating it. And it's not us. <laughs> it's not us. Yeah. Now, but this, this is something <laughs> different. This was them, you know, not having proper security. So. Um, you would think. Like, one of the biggest gaming industries there. The large, w- at one time, the largest gaming company in <laughs> yeah. Europe. I still think they actually may be again. Uh, so their internals, if you missed the, the story, their internal systems were compromised. Someone stole the source code for Witcher and for Gwent mm-hmm. and for Cyberpunk as well as, as financial information. <laughs> and then they sold it online for an undisclosed amount of money, estimated in the millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. And because of all of this stuff, it's just rippling into everything else that they do. So uh, if you work... That, yeah, that timetable right here, uh, yeah. scratch that. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, anytime it's gonna be soon. Del- more and more and more delayed every single week. Yeah, I'm. I'm done with Cyberpunk. I don't care. Yeah, but I don't care it, until it until like I said until a bunch more of those patches and you're just delaying but, yeah. these patches, so it's just gonna take a little longer for us to return a lot to Cyberpunk. Longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. There was a Terraria dev that we a small story that we talked yes. about that who got his account his Google account everything taken. <laughs> Just removed. He didn't break any terms of service according to, to, to him and his, his Gmail, his Drive, his YouTube. Everything was just was deleted. It was deleted <laughs> from, from yeah, from the <laughs> Google Book of Life. And they're like, well, if, if you're going to do this and you're not, I'm going to take Terraria away from you. And uh, apparently Stadia, who know, like, you know, Stadia doesn't have any game studios anymore, really needs Terraria. So they fixed the situation finally. <laughs> it took over a month and no email, <laughs> no drive, no anything for over a month. Uh, and this, the, 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 the developer himself was not the person who tweeted this out, but so a representative from the company, because if I were him, I'd be pissed yeah. and I would be like, I'm not apologizing to any of these people, but we got a, a forum post saying that they, the Stadia version will go ahead after all. As you may have noticed, we have a ton of issues to kick off the year streaming from locking down of the a Google account early in July after a month of pushing when with immense support of our fans, Google finally reached out and was able to provide a lot of transparency around the situation and restore access to all of our accounts. A month. I mean, if, if you run your entire business through Gmail, through YouTube, through any of these other... That's like, some scary stuff. I mean, that it, it's so much stuff. Uh, I'm glad that they were able to get it through, but it's just it was another frightening thing where it's just like, wow, I am so reliant on Google services, on, on some of these other things, so... If you are a Stadia fan and you're trying to get your money's worth, uh, at least you're going to have at least one more new game before Google probably... Don't forget about the class action lawsuit. Uh, probably access them. Oh, and the class action lawsuit we yes. talked about last week. <laughs> but the big story about Stadia this week is uh, we got the Jason Schreier, as he likes to do, the big expose on Google Stadia. And so we got a lot of information, a lot of new information, too, um, that he that he posted. Um to some of the, the brief things to run down is Google Stadia missed initial sales targets by sales targets by hundreds of thousands of units shipped, which is 
it's a lot. I was I could not believe that they wanted to, that their they their sales numbers were yeah, so high. Yeah. They were trying to take on consoles rather than starting small, like Google typically does. And Google spent about ten million dollars each to acquire games. So that's Red Dead, that's uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, that's <laughs> that's Watch Dogs. Ten million dollars just for access. Those of devs those are like, games. yeah, boy. Uh, Damn, that is so much money. It, it it's it's they do have just to well, sell the game, mm-hmm. and they still get a cut of the money too. So it's like I'm gonna give you ten million dollars, and I'm gonna give you this percentage of the profits, and then they're like, sure, <laughs> whatever, we'll give you, we'll <laughs> so give you that. Man. Yes, sign me up, please. Uh, and so the article kind of goes into how they did everything wrong. Uh, they hired the wrong people. The pe- the CEO at the time, or so current their strategy CEO, was also oh, it was big. terrible strategy, yeah. right? The CEO admitted multiple times, "I'm not really a gamer." It's like, well, it shows. It's kind of blatant that it shows you. Do, the person who did your business development also didn't do any market research because all of these other services had comparable yep. services, but they didn't require that. You know, you have to pay the subscription, and you have to buy the controller, and you have to pay full price, sometimes more for the games. And so they were doomed from the start. And he just kind of goes on to expose uh, a lot of that. Do you guys uh, take a look at the article? No, Mm-mm. well, it's not. It's not. It's yeah. it's it's, it's uh, a lot of stuff that we already knew. The, the yeah, that's what I kind of figured. I was like, look, it's like you said, the CEO doesn't know nothing about the games. It's just like a terrible practice. It just. It was doomed from the start. Yeah, absolutely doomed. Uh, the the, the sh- most shocking thing was the, the $20 million check to Ubisoft for Assassin's Creed <laughs> and The Division. It's like, are you... <laughs> Excuse me, how much? And they still have to <laughs> give them money when they sell the games. Like, it is the most ridiculous thing ever. That's what like, you have to do, though. When you're starting a new service, you need to pay these companies in order to put those games on your platform. That's not surprising at all million? to me. Yeah, it's not surprising at all to me. It's just the service itself was poorly conceived and it didn't work out. And they would have made their money back if the service was good. Uh, they put some more time and effort, like you said, market research into it and see what do we think will work. Mm-hmm. What you know, and and then like this was dead on arrival. It was yeah. dead before arrival. Yeah, we so. we knew it was going to so die. So just before. a complete waste of money. And I'm happy that some of those companies got some money out of Google uh, yeah. to maybe make some more games. Twenty million dollars. Not put it in their pockets and their stupid oh, yachts, no, but, they would but never make more, do that. more games. <laughs> they would never do that. <laughs> All right. So th- that's the, the big stories for, for this one. You guys had some ones that you want to talk about, right? Uh, yeah. Well, just EA. I mean, this a uh, few people uh, forwarded this one to me. I was looking it up while we were reading those. Is EA's putting the future of its franchises, including Titanfall, into the studio's hands. It's a new chief studio officer, Laura M- Miley, talks about her role uh, with EA's internal studios and basically saying how in terms of our game development philosophy, our players are always our North, north Star. But this is stuff that they've been saying that's, always. That's a pre Because that's how market. they can get, yeah, that's how they get away with, uh, well, they, our players want the microtransactions because they're buying the yes. microtransactions. They're really not saying anything different other than uh, when I started this current role, I wanted to strip away some of the preconceived notions about what games we should invest in. Uh, and since then, we have announced a slate of incorporating players into uh, their voice into our development process by announcing a slate of games that players asked for. A new skate, because every time she says, every time <laughs> they open Instagram, they see skate for skate for hashtag. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I don't know if they're aware if that's turned more into a meme than it is players wanting skate for. We invested I know hundred million dollars in skate for it <laughs> because of a meme. Yeah. I don't know. I think there are players that want yes. skate, but it's going to be funny if skate for comes out and it fails because mm. it's just nobody plays it. Anyways, we're we're doing a new skate. We're doing college football. We're doing Command and Conquer remaster, a Mass Effect trilogy, that we, and we develop free one. content for Battlefield or Battlefront Two for several years to turn the perception of that game completely around. Well, that's good. I mean, it should have never had that bad perception that you needed to turn around. So we're not going to give you, you know, credit for that. And basically, all they're saying is that uh, we recently advanced innovation teams that are heavily focused on tech development and long-term game development. These teams explore innovations which you'll get to experience in two to three years. What 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 was that in response to? 
are you going to get rid of microtransactions? Or are you going to like change some of this stuff? And she said, well, all this stuff takes time. So you'll see in two or three years. It's probably, they're not getting rid of it. They're probably just putting even more sinister. Yes. <laughs> they're rebranding them. Yeah, they'll find new ways to do surprise, it. Super surprise mechanics. Highly ethical. Yeah. And anyways, <laughs> uh, but then they start talking about Apex and, and you know, the Titanfall. Might, might we see a, a new Titanfall? What does the future hold for those? And she's like, well, we're going to actually kind of leave it up to the studios and the players and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So we'll see. Now, it's previously, EA has had their grubby hands in everything, right? And they for sometimes they'll force their developers to do this and that, well, or they'll just yeah. fucking shut them down, right? Exactly. So I don't know whether to believe her or no. to... Yeah, I know. You know, you know exactly whether to believe her. Well, I, I do think that they are starting to ease up a little bit, and I don't want to give them credit for that yet because I want them to continue to have to prove that because mm-hmm. games like Star Wars Squadrons... Uh, the the legitimate free content that they released and a bunch of other stuff and uh, they are doing like that shitty Command and Conquer mobile game failed everybody <laughs> hated it now they're doing the actual Command and Conquer remasters which is what people ask for and what people want it Mass Effect trilogy remaster all this other stuff it's going in the right direction especially with the new story that we will be talking yeah. about in the our next episode the next episode look so EA, that's it EA has shown me about Dragon Age four who they are. And I believe them, and mm-hmm. I don't care how much da- song, like song and dance we get now. Like, no, like, I, I can change. No, no, I no. Know exactly who <laughs> you are. All right. Well, make sure that you check out these next, the other videos that we're hinting at here in, mm-hmm. in the next episode. Mm-hmm. And make sure you check out Crunchyroll. Click these links below. Help us out. As sponsor our sponsor. Help yourself out by watching some great anime, uh, Demon Slayer. Slayer and Jujutsu Kaisen. All right. Thank y'all so much, and we'll see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys. Bye guys.